The Monerotopia Price Report segment is sponsored by Local Monero. Avoid using KYC exchanges. Buy and sell Monero directly for fiat, peer-to-peer. Good morning. So, looking here at the Monero US dollar chart. Um, I guess uh, really what we got to talk about price today most of all is um, there's been some negative action overall in the market. And I think this probably shouldn't be too surprising to us. Um, but uh, as far as Monero goes, um, we've actually had a little bit more positive action, I would say. So this is the weekly chart, and um, obviously this is kind of a long time frame. Just wanted to make sure we catch our bearings here. Um, this big red dildo was uh, was price crashing to the downside when uh, when CZ, uh, no, uh, sorry, not CZ, he he'd been removed actually. When Binance decided to uh, list delist Monero, um, but that was actually kind of a celebration point for us, which was um, which was great. And so since then, we've been in this kind of triangle pattern here, this sort of sideways triangle, and we're just kind of barely touching up on the top side of that. Um, this, I mean, there's the, there's the potential to break this thing to the upside. That would be, um, that would definitely be something that would be uh, price positive, right? There would be a positive signal here, break this thing to the upside and then go to the top. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily um, hold my breath for that, uh, just simply because the rest of the market does look, it looks mildly problematic. Um, I'm not saying that um, that the top is in or anything, but um, it, the, the rest of the markets don't look super great. We'll take a look at that in a little bit. Um, we can also see that um, during this this general crypto pullback, the Monero to Bitcoin price ratio has actually come up just a little bit, um, 18% there. Um, so again, still like, especially with the length of time that we've been here forming this pattern, it, it could still take some time for this to actually break to the upside. So while I've been saying that, yeah, this this is kind of a bottoming pattern here, uh, at, at the same time, because it's so long in the tooth, or really maybe long in the tooth wouldn't be quite the right phrase, but because it's been developing for so long, it, it really, like, it could take time for a pattern like this to, to actually start breaking to the upside. So um, I do think that, um, that at some point we'll get a decent, strong rebound, and I think that... Uh, even corroborating that from what we're seeing on Twitter, what we're seeing out in you know in the crypto land, the crypto world, we are seeing a few big names here and there start to mention Monero. Um, people with 20, 30, 50,000 followers, um, sometimes 100,000 followers, mentioning Monero. Um, and we're seeing, like, just in general, apart from the core of laser eyed, hmm, we'll just say people <laughs> to be nice today. Um, the other, like the other people that are more peripherally generally associated with Bitcoin, I'm seeing them open up to Monero. I'm seeing them saying, you know what, maybe hey, what is this thing again? Like, like they're, I don't see the kind of toxicity against Monero, except from a sort of core group of, uh, of laser eyed maxis. So these are, these are good developments. Right. And so, um, you know, I would, I would definitely think that, I mean, how, given that our price has already sustained so many attacks in terms of fractional reserve and delisting. I can only imagine that that even getting a small influx of people um, is going to be is going to spell good things for price. Um, and you know, it might not be it might not be massive, you know, five x, ten x gains, something like that, right? Um, but overall, what I personally, when it comes to money, when it comes to creating a digital fabric, a digital money, I would much rather see slow, steady adoption and price gains that happen in a slow, steady fashion. That's the kind of thing that enables merchants to accept it. Um, price stability is something that, uh, that that's important for currency, not mad gains, not like, quote unquote, the falsely called store of value, which is just a thin veil for saying my, my bags pump the most, um, which, which actually makes you a speculative asset, not a store of value, because if your bags pump the most, but then they also crash a lot, um, that's, that's not useful for merchants. That's not good money. Money needs to be relatively stable over short periods of time. Ironically, apparently, currency doesn't need to be a store of value over long periods of time because the dollar's been around for like 100 years or more in its current form, or at least since 1971. And even though it's steadily, slowly, slowly losing value to everything because they print it, it holds its value really well over short time frames. Um, so maybe we're even discovering a few new things about um, about what currency needs to be here. Um, you know, as we as we learn more about about the system, about monetary systems, as we watch this fiat experiment unfold before our eyes. Yet I digress. 
Okay, so um, we can also take a look at XMR versus Ethereum. Same kind of story. It's also in this kind of very long-term bottoming pattern. We're also looking here with the wave magic turned on, right? These uh, standard deviation bands. At some point, I mean, this thing absolutely should come back to these standard de standard deviation lower bands here, these orange bands. Um, you know, the, it, it hasn't, and that's, uh, to me, that's suspect, okay, but whatever. It's it's going to happen, guys. This thing is going to rebound to, to the upside here at some point. Um, you know, one thing we forgot to take a look was the wave magic on the Monero US dollar price. I think uh, I think TradingView made some kind of upgrade because uh, I'm actually seeing. <laughs> oh, of course they want to make me uh, not to be a liar right there. I was just trying to give you praise, TradingView, and then you had to crash my tab. It could be Firefox. It's possible. I've just had problems with Firefox lately. Uh, all right. Anyways, um, yeah, we're kind of occupying these lower standard deviation bands in general. I don't I don't like this price action. Um, in fact, the standard deviation bands would sort of be contradictory in a way towards, um, like, okay, hypothetically, if we break this, uh, we could still, let me erase that. That's okay. So the lines here, right? The pleb lines, hypothetically, let's suppose we break the pleb lines, but we stay below the standard deviation bands. Hypothetically, that, that might not be good, um, in terms of the standard deviation bands. Cause you'll notice these are already starting to curl down. So hypothetically, um, as lower standard deviation bands start to curve down, that usually means bad things for price. So I would kind of say these two technical analysis um, metrics, if you will, uh, I would say they're kind of contradictory right now. So um, uh, again, I, I don't trade Monero, and this is one of the reasons why. I've just seen Monero's chart is dirty. The wave, like when we look at the wave magic on larger time frames, the chart looks dirty. It doesn't look clean. Um, I've just seen too many times where um, the technical analysis just doesn't work out. Um, so I just, I generally, <laughs> I generally just stay away from trading Monero. Uh, it's useful. I use it, you know, and that's what you're, that's what we're supposed to be doing here with, uh, with digital freedom money. Um, okay. The, uh, the price divergences, not, not really anything here to speak of. Poloniex is still, you know, doing their stupid shit. Um, but Hey, that's, that's what just, that's what Justin Sun likes to do apparently. Um, and we'll take a look actually, you know, why don't we just look at it now? We'll, we'll be a, a bit schizophrenic today. Uh, this darker green line, that's TRX, um, that's Tron, that's the Justin Sun coin, and he's been doing very good for like the past week. So um, I guess, you know, cheers to all those people that love Tron, which apparently include Maximalist since they love Tether so much and since Tether trades primarily on Tron and Ethereum. Okay, back to Monero. Um, actually, you know what, there's probably not much more here to talk about with Monero. Uh, I guess we look at the market cap dominance, but I don't like looking at this chart because it makes me cry. So um, yeah, we'll just look at that and, and call it a day. Um, at least for, for the, uh, for the price stuff on Monero. Um, okay. So let's take a look at the transaction counts. Um, here was where the attack happened. Um, and we're basically back down to baseline, which is about 25,000 transactions. So, uh, I, I was kind of hoping that our baseline would sort of resolve closer to 30, you know, because we're saying, Hey, finance delisted, people are using different platforms, you know, we're having to do more on chain transactions. And I guess if we were to look at um, sort of the longer term. In fact, why don't we do this? Let's take a look at the simple moving average. And I like to look at the 30-day moving average. Maybe that's a bit too long of a time frame. Um, uh, yeah, so we had this, you know, yeah, that is too long of a time frame. Let's go down to seven. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you can see that we are like, we are slowly, slowly still increasing on, on these transaction counts. Um, we, we came down, um, especially in January, 2023, uh, cool. just after the end of the bear market, right? Like just after that started ending, that's when we started our uptrend uh, in the transactions. So we, we are still higher. In fact, our transaction counts are currently at about the same level that they were during the bull market last time. So I, I guess that's pretty good, especially considering that our prices are nowhere near um, all-time highs. So we are like, despite the fact that our prices aren't near all-time highs, we're still doing the kind, same levels of transactions and, and much greater actually. Than we did than we did back uh, back during the bull market, and when I say I guess much greater, maybe we shouldn't include the the little attack there that happened, or maybe not an attack, just um just stress testing. That's what I'm going to call it from now on, stress testing. Uh, let's see hash rate. Let's take a look at hash rate. Uh, it looks like we've we we're continuing to fall a little bit on hash rate. Not sure what would be driving this or why this would be happening, but eh, uh, okay, it is what it is. I'm sure probably someone out there has some smart ideas about why this is happening. Um. This chart wasn't, oh, okay, good. Um, yeah, so we're still looking at about 22,000 nodes globally. Uh, I think it's pretty cool that, you know, just six months ago, nine months ago, this thing was, um, this was closer to 12,000. So I don't know, we, with, with the, um, 
with the stress test of the network, hypothetically, could this be an attempt to defeat um, uh, <laughs> uh, drawing a blank here to defeat our IP address masking? How, how could I forget what that's called? Um, I guess it's early in the morning, guys. Give me a break. Anyways, um, yeah, I, I hope these are all organic nodes. I would wonder, hey, shouldn't shouldn't hash power have gone up with this? So I do raise an eyebrow a little bit at having 22,000 nodes when, you, when we used to have 12,000 on this chart. Maybe it's just an artifact of the way the data is collected. Maybe they changed the way the data is collected. Um, let's see, where can we find these graphs about the anarchist? Okay, let me copy the link here and I'll drop it into the chat. That's moneromap.fail um, and then Monero transaction counts. Uh, okay, yeah, there you go again. Um, okay, so yeah, I guess that's I guess that's wrapping it up for our for a quick look there at Monero. And uh, why don't we just take a look at Bitcoin? So looking at the daily candles here, you'll notice we sort of fell from from the underside of this uh, of this line. Honestly, this this really isn't as like terrible as it looks. What we can do, I guess we'll keep that line down there just for reference. What we can do is just kind of extend that a little bit. I would probably expect things to to try and resolve later on um, in the summer, maybe towards August or something, or maybe towards July. I kind of have the feeling that this chart's going to break to the upside, but I'm not confident that it's going to yield any major gains. Like I don't I don't expect Bitcoin to go to 100k anytime soon. Maybe if some negative thing happens and the intervention is made, which that's not going to happen, but I, guys, I just don't see any way that Bitcoin gets there. Bitcoin currently has everything going for it. It's got the ETFs. It had the having. It's got the NFTs and the memes and the degenerates are on chain now. And everyone's like, come to party in Bitcoin. And even their testnet now <laughs> with runes had actually, actually had value on their testnet. People were trading Bitcoin for value on the testnet, um, which is which is kind of hilarious because uh, who was it? One of our devs, I think it was RB Runner 7. He wrote like, a, I should have pulled this up for just to prepare for RB Runner 7 wrote a fiction story about launching a testnet in Monero and then creating value out of that testnet as like his shitcoin, but it was just a Monero testnet. Um, and and then like that that fiction actually became reality in, in the Bitcoin world. Really, really hilarious. Um, oh, okay, Mr. Anderson, you're also, you're asking about the price charts. Okay. Uh, this is all on on TradingView, um, tradingview.com. So you can get the free service, which you can you can only put like one or maybe three indicators. You just sign up for an account, um, and you can put like one or three indicators. But these charts that I'm using, let's go back to. So some of these charts that I'm using, like the um, actually, let's go to Monero versus gold because eh, why not? So this right here, all the wave magic stuff that I'm talking about, technically speaking, this is like this is something like eight indicators at once. Yeah, all of these, all of the, this is eight different indicators overlaid on the same chart to produce this chart. Um, and then each of these indicators has something like 64 lines. So, I mean, we're looking at like 500 lines on this chart to make this a reality. Um, and to do that, you need like the, you need higher levels of su subscriptions to add more indicators to charts. Um, I will, I will probably at some point um, make this wave magic indicator available for people. Um, but that, that point, that time is not right now. So, um, but yeah, all these charts you can find on, on tradingview.com. So, uh, yeah, tradingview.com. So, uh, let's see. All right. Going back to Bitcoin. Uh, let's take a look at the, at the shorter time frame. Um, and we'll turn on the wave magic as well because yeah, it looks colorful. It looks cool. And I do think the standard deviations have been very useful for myself in making decisions. Again, one thing that I've, I've told you guys a lot and I'll keep telling you, keep reminding you, you, you cannot use any one technical indicator as like your your trading god. You know, like you can't use that as the ideal thing. Like this is the thing. Like I know how cool and colorful and awesome the wave magic looks, but this doesn't work all the time. It works. It generally tends to work, and and, and patterns and themes come out at you. But you, if you want to be successful at buying and selling rather than just hodling. You need to corroborate different signals together, and it needs to be more than just technical analysis. Like, it's great when all of the technical analysis stuff lines up together, and that's usually a pretty strong signal when that happens. But you also want to corroborate that with the fundamentals happening in the market and the hype cycles and the news cycles, and you need to corroborate that against the 
the global liquidity situation as well. Like, like what's the Fed doing? Are they printing more? Are they printing less, et cetera? Um, so if you want to be successful, my suggestion is throw as little amount of time doing any actual trading. Spend most of your time just being familiar with the markets and look for when things all kind of line up and point the same direction. Um, so right now, in terms of the wave magic, yeah, it looks like Bitcoin hit uh, hit, hit some some key levels right here. Uh, they're maybe they're not key levels, maybe they're more like minor levels. But this was kind of an area that you would say, hey, maybe maybe we could be looking at some kind of temporary bottom. And now Bitcoin is getting back into the lower standard deviation bands. And hypothetically, if it can balance out here and not take another big drop, um, if it was able to do that, that would give that would give you a little bit more bullish feelings on how that price action is unfolding. And in a lot of cases, technical analysis, you're drawing all this stuff and you're trying to understand how is price action unfolding. Sometimes you can just look at the price action and have the intuition of just knowing like, man, this is weak. Like this, this does not look like strong price action. Um, like, so in a lot of cases, you're, you're just better off like not trading, looking at the markets, being aware of what's going on getting a really good feel for for how things look, getting the intuition for it, and then making the occasional move. That, that's really like, if you want to trade, that is what I would recommend getting started. I would not recommend trying to learn how to day trade. I know how luring that can seem. I know it's like, oh, but look at all these movements. If I just bought here and sold here and bought here and sold here, I'd make all this money. And, and it just almost never unfolds that way. A very, very few brilliant chads can make that happen. Um, but I'm not one of them, right? I have done some short-term trading. I've done the leverage thing. I don't like it. I don't do good at it. Even when I've been right, <laughs> I've still gotten wrecked um, uh, on on leverage trading. So probably you know trading a little bit too much leverage. Luckily, you know I'm only using little bits. I was only using small amounts, uh, relatively speaking. So um, okay, yeah, I guess that's. I mean, there's nothing really interesting going on here. Price is just churning, waiting, waiting. Maybe we could take a look at the weekly on Bitcoin just to get a slight idea, you know, of a bigger you know, of, of the broader picture of what's going on here. I mean, so far you'd look at this and you'd say, okay, that, that is a pretty Looks long. Looks like we lost pullback. the graphs. Oh, did we? Mm, all right. Yeah, me... I lost the graphs. Uh... Oh, my tab died. Man, why are my tabs all dying? It's not like you day, huh? Man, I don't know, like, what happened. I, I don't know if it was an update, but maybe I need to go to an older, different version of Firefox. Okay. How about now? Got it. Okay. Uh, yes. Yeah, so, okay. We're looking here at the uh, sort of the longer, longer term charts on Bitcoin. Um, yeah. And, and so this is, this has been kind of a sustained pullback. It's not terrible. Like I, I wouldn't say that the fat lady sung on this chart by any means, but you, you'll notice like this line down here, like this is kind of your, this is your overall like uptrend line, right? It's, it's not necessarily at the bottom. It's not necessarily at the top. We've been under it before. Um, this is kind of, we were following along that line and then things just pumped to the upside. So things really, for a little bit, they really got out of hand after the, the ETF release and then the hype for the happening. It, it would make a lot of sense to come back to this line and then try and spend some time um, trying to make another high, another all-time high. Um, as we talked about before, like this monthly close, this this candle right here, this monthly April candle, that's, that's weakness. You know, we talk about... Um, we talk about watching the way in which price action unfolds. That's weakness. Like we really need a May close to be higher than this candle right here because it's every other all-time high break has been higher, has broken with momentum. So not breaking with momentum here, it's not necessarily that it's like that it that it spells doom and it spells another bear market. It's just that it tells you what we already know that Bitcoin is having diminishing returns and that you're gonna get less and less gains, less and less mad gains going into the future. So that's that's just how it works with small cap assets that become big cap assets. Like it takes more and more liquidity, <laughs> it takes more and more hyper Bitcoinization uh, to to get yourself, you know, to a million dollar Bitcoin. Um, and that's that's just not how money and markets work. So Bitcoin has already entered diminishing returns. You're going to see it more and more. Um, the salt on Twitter will inevitably be um, glorious. So you know, look look for that. That'll be fun. Uh, we can look at Bitcoin dominance too as well really quick. Yeah, so this thing still basically in this big channel that we kind of uh, ad hoc drew yesterday, uh, yesterday, last week on the charts. So that line and this line. I tend to think this chart also feels a little bit like weakness. It's already, you know, it's rolling over a little bit. Hypothetically, we could draw another little line like that, you know. And so, for example, if we, 
why all right we're, we're just move on we'll just for, we'll just forget about that um oh you know i wanted to look at some of the other privacy coins today as well so xano xano has like very very low liquidity at the moment which i think is like that that's good like if you want coins that could potentially go up a lot low liquidity is good and especially a project like xano that's respected by uh, the Monero community and and is doing interesting things and you know Zoidberg, he crypto Zoidberg he like like you guys have mentioned before like Doug has mentioned before and had him on the show like this guy was an OG like one of the original Monero guys um, that helped to develop the protocol so he's developing Xano um, I don't want to show it or anything but I guess I just kind of did um, <laughs> they will they will be at Monerotopia again this year uh, which is awesome um, so excited for that. <laughs> 